welcome to Life in Biology. I'm Dr. Joel Graff, and in my lab we research um, some human proteins that are E3 ubiquitin ligases, but that doesn't mean much to most people, so I'm going to talk a little bit about what an E3 ubiquitin ligase is. And in essence, it's an enzyme that is the third enzyme in an enzyme cascade. So there's an E1 protein, an E2 protein, and an E3 protein. The proteins we study are these E3s, the blue ones, but let's start at the beginning. You have a small protein that's just 76 amino acids called ubiquitin in the cell, and it is a protein that can be covalently attached to other proteins. How this happens is you have an E1 enzyme, which is known as an ubiqu ubiquitin activating enzyme. It will, uh, with the energy from breaking down ATP to AMP and pyrophosphate, it will create a covalent bond between ubiquitin and a cysteine on that E1 enzyme. That covalent bond then gets transferred onto an E2 enzyme, and I didn't write it here, but the E2 is called the ubiquitin conjugating enzyme. So the E1 that has the ubiquitin interacts with the E2. The E1 loses the ubiquitin, now the E2 has the ubiquitin uh, conjugated to also assisting on that protein. Then the E2 interacts with uh, an E3 protein, and importantly, for the type of E3 enzymes that we study, the E3 protein interacts directly with the target, and when there is an interaction between the E2 and E3, the E2 is brought into close enough proximity to the target protein that the ubiquitin is, rather than being transferred onto the E3 enzyme, it gets transferred onto the target protein. So now you've got a target protein that has a ubiquitin covalently attached. These were attached to cysteine residues, whereas on the target, it's attached to a lysine amino acid residue. The E3 can then let go of the target protein so that you have a target that has a ubiquitin uh, over here, or, and that's what's kind of shown with this picture, but it could interact with that same protein again to go around the circle, interact with a, another E2 that has been ubiquitinated, and get a second ubiquitin added onto the target. So here, instead, we'd have two ubiquitins drawn on this target. This can happen over and over, and the ubiquitins will be put onto consecutive ubiquitins, building a chain of ubiquitins on the target molecule. That can be important for signaling pathways, but it can also signal to send the target to the proteasome, which is a protease complex that chews up the target protein. Um, we'll talk about that proteasome activity in another experiment. Another thing to know about E3 enzymes is they may interact with that green target like I've been showing in these pictures, but the E3 might also have another protein target or, or more than one other target in the cell. So there is going to be a subset of proteins that the human genome encodes that are going to be targeted for post-translational modification by the E3 enzyme through this pathway. So one of the first steps when we're studying these E3 enzymes in my lab is to attempt to identify what other proteins in the cell the E3 enzyme might interact with. Uh, and if we can figure out what, and what proteins are being targeted by the E3, then we can come up with hypotheses about what is the purpose of that E3 in the cell. So we're taking a, a protein that all we know is it's a ubiquitin ligase, and we're trying to identify its functional role in the cell. Uh, so we'll have follow-up videos talking about the ubiquitin ligase, system. There's a number of variables to mention, and that is the number of ubiquitins that could put on the target can be different. Sometimes it's just one, sometimes it's a string. And other things that can be variable is in these, uh, in this drawing, I have ubiquitin being the modification to the target protein, but it doesn't have to be ubiquitin. It can be proteins called sumo, and if that happens, it's called sumoylation. Simulation. 
Uh, you could put ISG15 onto other proteins. That would be called ISG elation. When you put ubiquitins on the target, it's called ubiquitination. So once we identify targets of these E3s, the, uh, the proteins they interact with, we're going to then, in the next step of our experiment, look to see what whether it is ubiquitin that is added onto the target, or if it is a different type of what's called a ubiquitin-like protein. That would be the SUMO or the ISG15, and there could be more. Anyway, so that is the first step of our research program, and we'll have follow-up videos. Thanks for watching.